Good day to you and happy Monday to you. Mark Seth Hurricane Track here. It is Monday, the 23rd of June, 2025. Thanks for tuning in to today's video. The main topic, of course, Invest Area 90L. Yes, I know it doesn't look very healthy this morning, but I still think it's worth talking about showing you some of the mechanics of what I look for and maybe what you could be looking for as you track these systems. In the future, I'll show you what we look at. We'll also take a look at severe weather potential for the next few days, and that explains why I am in a hotel room once again. Many, many days on the road for yours truly here, but yeah, tropics are starting to get at least a little bit more interesting, so let's take a look. Again, thanks for tuning in. Let's get started. First, off the interactive map from the Hurricane Track Insider site, we do have an area out here in the eastern Pacific. Surprise, surprise. 70% chance that this goes on to develop further off the coast of Mexico. Hopefully, no turns back towards the mainland this time like Eric just did. But remember, hope is not a planning tool. We can hope all we want. You still have to watch and be ready if something were to happen. The other area of interest up here at 90L, Invest Area 90L. Let's zoom in on it. I can show you where it is in relation to Bermuda, for example, which is sitting right over here. These are the Azores. So it's up here in the subtropics. 70% chance on the last update from the Hurricane Center, but honestly, it's starting to look pretty sheared and ripped up a little bit, so we're not going to worry about it too much. But again, I want to explain, well, what do we look at? How can you tell? We'll talk about that. First, real quick, why is it called 90L? Most of you know but in case you don't, it's basically just a naming convention, a way to label a suspect area, something other than a blob of clouds in the subtropical Atlantic or a cluster of storms in the Gulf, whatever. It's just a, an easier method. Now, why is it 90 and not 70 or 60 or 10 or whatever? I don't know. They go 90 through 99, and then the L, we actually shorten it. If you look at it, if I click on it again, it is actually... Um, AL90, uh, and we just shorten it to 90L. That's just us. I guess we're a little lazy sometimes, but that's what we do. Uh, it's actually done from the National Hurricane Center. They designate this, activate it as an invest area, and we again just shorten it to 90L. So once we get to 99L, and yes, that'll eventually happen, we start over again. All right? So there's that. So last night, Dylan, my friend Dylan, posted this, and a lot of people were watching this, probably along with the NBA final game or whatever else you're tuned into. And yes, this looked a lot better last night. Invest Area 90L, he said, making a run at becoming the first storm of the season. Big burst of storms over its center tonight. The window of development slams shut tomorrow as uh, conditions become hostile. Slams shut tomorrow. Well, here we are. We are now in tomorrow or at tomorrow, however you say it, and he is certainly right about that. This is three hours ago. Uh, it looks like scrambled eggs, he says on satellite this morning. I doubt this gets named Andrea, and he's exactly right. Well, what happened? Well, let's take a look over here at this cool dashboard. I really like this from Tropical Tidbits. Let's look at the satellite animation first. This is the colorized infrared, so it shows us the temperatures of the clouds in the atmosphere. Let's switch it to the high resolution visible so we can really see down at the details clearly and you can see this as well as I can a well-defined low-level circulation right in there and some thunderstorm activity right there but and this is the very big like this is why I wanted to make sure even though this doesn't look like it's going to do much that I did a video today because I want to teach you something you can see this it's got a vigorous low-level circulation a little bit of thunderstorm activity why isn't this a depression? Because it seems like it might match the definition of a tropical depression. It's just not organized long enough. These storms are transient. They blow up, then they get sheared off. You have to have persistent deep convection, even though you do have the low-level circulation very much intact. It's just not very persistent overall. So there you go. And you can clearly see the upper-level winds are coming along and tearing these thunderstorms apart off in this direction, and uh, therefore it probably won't have a chance to develop. However, I wanted to show you the uh, signature there, that low-level vort max. There it is, vorticity maximum. If you want to use a term, that's it. That's what I look for. 
But again, you might have it down there at the surface, you know, 5,000 feet or so, close to the surface anyway, but the rest of it's just not happening. All right? So I wanted to explain that to you. Speaking of vorticity, let me get the color white here. Look at all this energy streaming up from Mexico across the border and into the U.S. Wow, that is a lot of energy around this big dome of high pressure that's going to be sitting out over here, baking everybody back east, sending moisture, kind of like a monsoonal flow, into parts of the southwest and the plains. And we'll talk about that more in just a little bit. There's the area that could go on to develop in the southeastern Pacific. And again, hopefully it will stay away from Mexico fully this time around. So anomalies. Let's look at the anomalies. This has been pretty interesting. Really busy here in the East Pack lately, although the anomalies really aren't that strong, and some of these hurricanes have been chewing away at what we did have. And it just goes to show you that warm water temperatures, well, that's pretty much all you need, 80 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. And these anomalies, the departures, these very warm waters, are not necessarily going to equal a very busy season. And this proves it. We've already gotten to the e-storm out here with Eric. And these anomalies over here are just marginal compared to the Gulf, which is way above normal, and the subtropical Atlantic as examples. And even the deep tropics out here, pretty warm, probably a degree Celsius. And it's consistent everywhere. And yet we've had nothing. Here, this is speckled with below average temps. We've already had five named storms, including very potent Hurricane Eric. Just thought I'd point that out. Actual water temperatures, this is interesting too, I tell you. I feel for you folks down here. That's 30 Celsius and above for our friends along the Gulf Coast states here. 31 Celsius, we're talking upper 80s already. And it's just the end of June. So once we get development later on, probably in August and beyond, at least that's climatologically what should happen, we're really going to have to watch this because not only is the Gulf warm, but it is running warmer than average by maybe a degree or two, and that does add extra energy. Meanwhile, our system is sitting out at around, let me get this map right, uh, 90L is sitting at about 33 north, which is about right there, and about 55 west. So roughly in this area here, in these water temperatures, this is an actual sea surface temperature map, about 27 Celsius or so or 81 degrees Fahrenheit for those of you playing at home not using the metric system. So there you go. It's in a pretty warm environment. Again, it's the upper level winds that are going to do a number on this feature. That's what it looks like on the GFS. Let's use this blue color. There it is, a very tiny little speck of energy, vorticity bundled out there between a couple massive ridges, one there, one over here, and it's kind of stuck in this area in the middle. It's going to go around and out to sea and probably not do very much. Why, though? Why won't it develop? Well, let's look at the upper levels. This is very easy to understand. There you go. This little trough right here, almost like a tropical upper tropospheric trough. Just a fancy way of saying tut, T-U-T-T. Those are strong upper level winds over the top of this system. And it's just simple. It's getting torn apart. The deep convection cannot sustain itself and wrap around, and this is uh, probably going to be the pattern going forward. And yep, it gets out, and that's the end of that. So going back to the lower levels, I do want to show you this. Just get us out to the end of the month anyway on the 6Z GFS. Anything else out there over the next week? Nope. And the euro is, is, let me get it up here. There we are. Uh, pretty much the same uh, over the next week or so. Nothing on the euro to worry about in the Atlantic. So as we look forward to July and July 4th weekend, which is not that far away, a pretty clear picture evolves here in the tropical Atlantic, Caribbean, and Gulf, which is great. You know, we don't need any of that when we got all sorts of other things we're dealing with globally. Severe weather. So this explains why I'm in the hotel room once again. My last week, my last effort this year of tracking severe weather, mainly hail, will come to an end for the season in Colorado, probably. Today, I'm in Wichita. That's the hotel room. And I'll be heading west to West Kansas today. Some limited thunderstorm activity. The hail chances today are pretty marginal at best. Uh, the better dynamics are in northeast Kansas and up towards the lakes. 
But I'm not going that way because tomorrow, let's put this back on categorical, check this out for Colorado. A little slight risk, but look at the hail. The significant hail has been outlined. I think that I will find the most and the largest hailstones of my efforts this year in Colorado tomorrow. I just have a feeling. Uh, but yeah, the severe weather is starting to ramp down generally, but that doesn't mean it's gone. You saw over the weekend, deadly tornadoes in the high plains. Very sad to see that. We still have to keep track of this stuff, keep a watch on it. Even though we're not having significant large outbreaks, I think there was even uh, a fatality or two in New York State, if I'm not mistaken. So yes, severe weather still a problem, even as the heat builds in, and we will eventually start watching the tropics even closer. By the time we get to Wednesday, I think we'll get another area of a slight risk over here somewhere, and I might be up in that region. But by the end of the week, I'm going to wrap it up and start driving my Tacoma back to North Carolina, and we get ready for hurricane season in earnest. And one thing you can do, I hadn't talked about this in a while, because I have forgotten. Uh, maps. The maps. I still have the tracking maps if you'd like to get one. There's a real picture of me standing next to one in my hallway near my office, which is behind me there. It is a 20 by 28 full color poster size tracking map. I drew it myself a long time ago in Adobe Illustrator. And I printed these by the hundreds of thousands way back in the early part of my career. And I have been selling them and giving them away to our patrons on Patreon at the $25 level for several years now. And I always have a bunch left over. And I figure, well, let me sell them to people who might want one. I know we track on apps and we've got, I mean, heck, we got this thing. Why, why would you need a paper map? Because paper maps are just cool. It's a nostalgic way to keep the art of tracking on paper alive. So if you want to get one, here's the link. I'll put a, um, a link to this in uh, the description of today's video. You can go right here to PayPal and uh, Venmo. And you can order one. And I got them with me. So I'll send it out. Like I have several with me packed up and ready to go. All I need to do is put your name and address on it. And by the way, if you ordered one and you have not received it yet, don't hesitate to email me and say, hey, I haven't gotten my map yet. A couple people said theirs haven't arrived. And I send them out like the day or two after I get the order. So something goofy is going on with the postal service, which, hey, it happens. But I want to make sure you have yours before we get to the first name storm. So if you ordered one and it hasn't arrived yet, don't be afraid to let me know, and I'll make sure I send another one because I have several with me on the road. All right? Thanks for tuning in. Probably no update tomorrow. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I will about the hail and the, the threat there in Colorado, but we'll see. Uh, either way, I'll be around all week doing something and certainly streaming live in the afternoons when we get the storms to blossom. So if you're subscribed to the YouTube channel, hint, hint, you should get a notification if you hit the button, hint, hint, again, as to when we go live. All right? Other than that, I am finished. You have a great rest of your Monday. As always, thanks for tuning in and giving me a part of your day. I'm Mark Suddeth. From all of us at Hurricane Track, I'll talk to you again soon.